Hi there, my name is Michael. I'm your friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter, and today we are going to discuss should I go to therapy after my stroke? Yes. Video is over. For those of you who need any more information, please continue watching. For those who just wanted to know, should I go to therapy? The answer is yes. <laughs> so now let's just discuss why you might want to, or in my opinion, you should need <clears throat> to attend some kind of mental health checkup. Right, after you've had a stroke, a brain injury, concussion, however you ended up in the brain injury club, the very exclusive one that we all belong to, there's a lot of reasons why you should attend therapy. Now, I've done a couple of videos about um, uh, like mental health and whatnot after a stroke or a brain injury. There's many specific and significant reasons why you should, I'm going to be honest, once you had a brain injury, you might want to consider being a lifelong consumer uh, of mental health products. Right? Let's just consider mental health like any other product right? or any other need and demand system. And I'm going to use your car as the best exemplar. You have a problem with your vehicle. You take it to the right expert. If you know your muffler's kind of loose, now, keep in mind, those of you that have the ability to fix your own cars, just ignore part of what I'm about to say, and then pay attention about two minutes from now. So, if you notice your muffler's loose, you go to a muffler shop. If you need, need, need new tires, you go to a tire person, tire shop. If you got body damage or rust or painting that needs repairing, you go to a paint shop. You want a stereo put in, you go to a stereo shop, right? You know, you'd send your car to the mechanic. Consider your, your neighborhood mechanic like your general practitioner. That's your family doctor. They can diagnose many things. They can fix many things. But when you get into specific areas about your car, they're going to say, hey, go to this guy. Or that shop down there does the best job. Like, I, I don't do body work. I don't do the painting because I'm not uh, kitted out for that. So I'm going to suggest you go to this body shop and this paint shop because they do the best jobs. Now, for those of you that are paying attention again, mental health is the same way. You're going to go to your general practitioner and depending on the place where you live, your general practitioner may not legally be allowed to act as a counselor unless they have the accreditation to do that. Right? They belong to uh, a professional body like you have a general practitioner who's also a social worker <laughs> or maybe in my case my new general practitioner's office they have a social worker essentially in the office so if I need to see one I just go to him and say I need a social worker and he'll hook me up with the the social worker in his office but there are many unique mental health opportunities after a brain injury, again, stroke, concussion, how you came into the club is irrelevant. You're, you're a member now. So after, I'm just going to use stroke because that's the simplest example I can use right now. So after a stroke, there is post-stroke anxiety and there is post-stroke depression. They're known and recognizable medical conditions. Right? You then have, how do you get your stroke? Right? Do you have PTSD because of it? I got that, right? Um, you know, like I, you may have PTSD because of your stroke, because of your stroke, you may end up with, um, a, ma a major depressive disorder, right? Uh, because of your stroke, now this is out on a limb, uh, and I don't know the number and what population this can occur to, but after some brain injuries, you can become schizophrenic. You could have significant mental health issues after such as schizophrenia or, or a schizoaffective disorder, uh, maybe bipolar. Like you could have a lifelong mental health condition that needs regular maintenance. Right? And that's why I say mental health is like a car. right? And should I go to therapy after my stroke? Yes, you should. Even if it's just for a checkup, a tune-up, right? just a quick little, I'm going to run myself into the shop and make sure... I'm going to do six sessions or I'm going to do eight sessions and I'm going to make sure everything's happy, happy, right? So me, I have a psychiatrist who supervises my 
medications for psychiatric issues uh, who diagnosed me with PTSD. Um, and then I have a social worker who I'm currently seeing, uh, and she is helping delivering the counseling for the PTSD. Uh, before my current therapist, I was seeing another one. Um, and if she is watching this, you are truly an amazing individual. And I'm sorry you left my community to go move for another opportunity in another community. And I really hope you're happy there. So should you go to therapy, go to a social worker, um, a registered psychotherapist, a psychologist, psychiatrist? Yes, you should. Definitively. Anytime, and I've mentioned this before, you have a change in your state of care. So it's been a while since I've touched on that. So what is a change in state of care? I'm glad you asked. A change in state of care is either a drastic change in ability or situation right? or a change in location. So let's just deal with state uh, ability and situation first. So as you progress through therapies, be it occupational therapy, be it physiotherapy, uh, be it speech and language uh, therapy, you're going to conquer hurdles, right? And as you start to conquer hurdles, you're going to encounter difficulties. Or maybe you just have difficulty getting up and getting near the hurdle, right? Because your world is so drastically different, right? I have days to this day where I look in the mirror and I'm not sure who that person is looking back at me some days. There are still days where I do not feel comfortable in my own skin, right? And that's because I'm still trying to rectify old me to new me, right? I, I had a certain level of known ability before my stroke, and now it depends on the day. It, it really does. Now, change in situation, that might mean you're going from home and back to work, or you're, you're going back to work and you're increasing your hours, or you know, you've decided that I can't do that work anymore, so I'm going back to school, right? So anytime you have to make uh, or have have made a change in state of ability or situation, you might want to consider doing a checkup, just like you would have with your car. You're about to go on vacation. You're about to drive 3,000 kilometers between Ontario, Nova Scotia, and back, right? You're about to do a fairly healthy workout on your car. You take your car to the shop and go, hey, I'm about to travel 3,000 kilometers, you know, uh, approximately 2,100 miles, right? on a vacation over two weeks. Can you just make sure the car's not gonna implode, explode, or fall apart on the road, please? Thank you, right? You know, that, that's, that's normal, right? You're about to have a change in state of situation, right? And you're gonna be doing different things. You're gonna be relying on your car for the next two weeks to, you know, get you from A to B, and you're not gonna be anywhere near your home. Now, a change in state of care, other than ability and situation, meaning location, so you start out, you have a stroke, you end up in a hospital. From the hospital, you go to ICU, to stroke, step down, to wherever. Well, do you go straight from hospital to home? Do you go straight from one hospital and sort of make your way around that hospital and then go to a rehab facility and then home? Do you end up going hospital, rehab, nursing home, home? Like anytime you change the clinical environment you're, you are in, again, that's a change in a state of care. So again, you might want to have a checkup or a check-in. So if you're still in the hospital, that's actually a better thing because you can turn to your neurologist, you can turn to the doctor that's been assigned to you, you can turn to your occupational therapist and go, hey, I need a brain check and not the scanning machine. I want to talk to someone about my brain to make sure everything is okay. Totally normal. I realize there's a definitive stigma about <clears throat> needing to check yourself in uh, to a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a social worker, um, a uh, therapist, whatever you want to call it, right? So you're going to someone that's qualified and licensed, that's had education about how the brain works or um, how to do various types of therapy and counseling, right? Uh, I'm not ashamed <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not ashamed or have an inability to admit I've needed help. 
and I've needed some pretty significant help at times. Um, I'm not a, afraid or ashamed to admit I, I've met an incredible individual who was my therapist, um, who I'm indebted to forever. I'm currently seeing another therapist who's also very skilled. Um, haven't seen this individual for the same amount of time, so I don't have that same relationship with. Uh, but she's great. Don't get me wrong. She, she's great at what she does. And I, I've been blessed with a psychiatrist who's amazing. Absolutely amazing. <clears throat> so people, they worry about what other people are going to think. Who fucking cares? It's not their life. People worry about what other people might say. Who the fuck cares? It's not their life. Yeah, there are going to be people out there that are going to hear, well, you went to a therapist, so there must be something crazy with you. You know, People are going to hear, well, you've been diagnosed with fill in the blank. There must be something really wrong with you. Those are people who are only looking for reasons to find a flaw in your character due to the fact that there's something you can't control. I can't control I had a stroke. It happened. Is it my fault I had a stroke? No. Five-year-olds can have strokes. 84-year-olds can have strokes. 17-year-olds can have strokes. Anyone can have a stroke. Now, yeah, anyone can have a stroke. I know you're right. And you're about to say, but stroke's an old folks thing. Statistically, yes. Right? The under 50 population throwing a stroke is 15 to 17%-ish, depending on the research. You know, um, So out of every 100 strokes, only 15 are under 50. The remainder are usually 70 or above. So yeah, it's an old folks thing. But it's really not, you know. Um, <clears throat> so, what can you do? The best you can do, like I've said in a whole bunch of other videos, is when you know you've reached that point where you need help, you find someone that you trust and you love, and you put them in an all-round firm bear hug grasp, and you beg they take you to help. Right? I've had to do it. It's not an easy decision to make. It's not an easy thing to do, but I've had to do it. Because ultimately, you kind of like need like a, a stroke navigator, right? Someone that can help you navigate, that can make objective decisions, that can have the ability to step back from the situation. Because your friends and your family, they're kind of stuck in that same quagmire you, you are in. Um, and then you, being the person that's had the stroke, you're trying to resolve old normal to new normal. You're trying to resolve, you know, am I going to be able to walk again? You know, am I going to have to have someone cut my food for me for the rest of my life? I haven't had to take a, sh I've been, haven't been able to take a shower alone in three months. You know, like you're trying to resolve all these things. And there's a lot of frustration and anticipation and self-doubt and worry and then you get into that what if -eries. like what if this, what if that, what if there's bears, you know. Um, so the long and the short of it is yes. Should you go to therapy after a stroke? 100% definitively yes. If anything at all, just for a checkup. And if something because becomes of that checkup, just follow the expert's advice just like you would if you went to the mechanic. So, on that note, if you like what you've been watching over the last 18 months and a bit, please like, share, subscribe. If you happen to know someone that is either a stroke survivor, a brain injury survivor, a concussion survivor, or someone supporting someone through their journey, please like, share, subscribe, point the channel out to them. They may get some benefit out of the content I generate. And if you happen to see someone around you that appears to me appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has lost a sense of balance, Someone who's having vision problems, they see in grayscale, they only see a little dot in the world. Someone who has a noticeable slackening facial droop. Someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all. Someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all. Someone has slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate language for situation or context. Someone who can't, has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately call 911 and place that person in a position of comfort. Some, something so simple might save a life.